In the summer of 1963, the year of the Beatles' first LP, the biggest scandal of the post-war years burst onto the front pages of Britain's newspapers. John Profumo, the Secretary of State for War and a married man, resigned after admitting that he'd had an affair with a 19-year-old model called Christine Keeler. It was the height of the Cold War, when America and Russia were threatening each other with nuclear weapons. Alarm bells rang, because while Keeler was sleeping with Profumo, she was also seeing Evgeny Ivanov, who was known to be a Russian spy. And there was a fourth man in this saga, the man who introduced Christine Keeler to Ivanov and inadvertently to Profumo. His name was Stephen Ward. I find him a fascinating character, so fascinating that he is the key figure in my latest musical. He was the pivotal figure of the scandal that erupted in the summer of 1963. The affair unfolded at a watershed moment in Britain, when the drab and dutiful 50s were giving way to the permissive 60s. At the time, it was impossible not to take sides. You either believed that the moral integrity of public life was under attack, or you thought it was a breath of fresh air, a sign that the times were changing along with the pill, the British pop explosion, and the smashing of class barriers. To those in government, Ward was a highly convenient scapegoat, a man who could be portrayed as a pleasure-seeking troublemaker who entrapped Profumo in his seedy lifestyle. But when the scandal cost Stephen Ward his life, others, especially the young, began to consider Ward as the victim of establishment hypocrisy. To this day, we don't know the full story. Successive governments have insisted that some information must remain locked up. That there are still some sensational personal items in here which, uh, which, which would be embarrassing to be uh, released. Sex, class, money and espionage, it's the scandal that refuses to go away. And at its heart stood Dr. Stephen Ward.